We all know it. As a matter of fact, it's what 99% of people think of when they hear the word dinosaur. The Tyrannosaurus rex is without a doubt the most popular dinosaur out there. And it makes sense considering how many different specimens have been found and studied, more than any other theropod close to its weight class. Its name means Tyrant King, and for good reason. There was no other land carnivore at the time that could match it in terms of size and power. But what would happen if we got a mega theropods from different regions and different times? The biggest of the biggest. Could the king be overthrown? Well, we're gonna try and figure that out in this video. If the T-Rex really was without a shadow of a doubt the most powerful theropod out there. And for this, I'm going to be using the largest mega theropods currently with the current documentation. Mega theropod sizes are always changing, so a day after this video is published, one of them could have been upsized or downsized. And these are the sizes I found from a few papers published, so if I get some wrong, I do apologize. I tried my best. Without getting too far into it, roughly 85% of you guys who watch these videos aren't subscribed. It would mean a lot if you could hit those buttons down below, as it's the best way you could support the channel right now. There is also a Discord link in the description below. And finally, we have today's sponsor, NordVP- uh, I'm, I'm just kidding, I don't have any sponsors yet. Please Nord, send the email. The T-Rex has had the biggest glow up of any dinosaur and that's no argument, no matter what you guys say. It's so OP that the directors of the Jurassic World movies had to make rotted up versions of other theropods to even stand a chance. Back in the early days, the days of prehistoric park and walking with dinosaurs, the good days to be honest, the T-Rex was usually placed at 6 tons, 7 if we're being generous. It was like the 5th largest theropod back then with the African and South American giants dwarfing it at the time. But now with more fossils and studies being done, it's become almost indestructible. While the largest weight given to it back then was 7 tons, the average weight now is 8. Yup, that's a pretty big jump. As a matter of fact, it wasn't uncommon for specimens to push 9 tons in weight with Sue and Scotty being examples of this. It gets crazier though. The average male Asian elephant weighs 5 tons, but the largest T-Rex specimen we found so far was almost triple that. That's bigger than any found so far. The lowest estimates place this animal at around 11 tons, with the higher ones approaching 13. It seems every 2 years or so, a bigger T-Rex is always found. The most recent one before Goliath came out was E.D. Cope, which was around 10.4 tons. If size isn't enough, it had the strongest bite force of any terrestrial land carnivore, if we exclude Dinosuchus. Or is that more aquatic? You know what? Yes, the T-Rex did have the strongest bite of any terrestrial predator. Ranging anywhere between 35 to 57,000 newtons, if the teeth closer to the posterior maxilla are used. To put this into perspective, the saltwater croc, which currently holds a world record for the strongest bite, has a bite force of 17,000 newtons, which is still two times less than that of the tyrant. In terms of arms, well, they aren't useless as many people think. They were actually quite powerful for their size. As for uses, it could be anything from aiding it in getting up, all the way to assisting males to hold on to females during mating. But they did really have a use when it came to hunting. With the main player stats out of the way, let's see if the contenders could outdo this. Right off the bat, about 60% of the top 10 largest mega theropods are from the Carcardontosauridae family. This group of theropods really were monsters wherever they lived and were usually the top predators. These guys are the slashers of theropods in general, if you exclude the megaraptors. The T-Rex may have been all about crushing, but these guys were more about that bleed effect. Their teeth are less blunt and thinner than that of the Tyrannosaurus, aiding it in leaving heavy wounds on whatever it bit. Whether it was a prey item, and even theropods in some cases would succumb to blood loss or infection. This isn't to say that they had a weak bite by the way, because without trying most could split you in two. I mean the largest members of this family had a bite force upwards of 30,000 newtons. Not as strong as the T-Rex, but strong enough to take down what it needed to. So as I said, I'm going to be putting the T-Rex up against the largest mega theropods out there. The ones over 7 tons, since anything below lost the fight without even setting foot in the ring. First up we have my favorite duck, the Dinochirus. A 7 ton, 40 foot long fluff boy that I would try to boop, even if it meant sacrificing my life. Unlike the Ceracinosaurus, the claws of this animal could have actually been used as a genuine weapon. They were more compact and robust, compared to the thinner overgrown claws of the Ceracinosaurus. While the Ceracinosaurus could have used its claws for defense, it wouldn't have been a primary reason, because they could be broken if hit with a decent amount of force. Dinochirus did use its claws for gathering water plants and other vegetation, along with even fishing believe it or not, but its claws could also be swung with deadly force, hence the meaning of its name being the terrible hand of Mongolia, and it had this for a good reason, as it shared its habitat with another mega theropod being the Tarbosaurus, a tyrannosaur that could weigh as much as 6 tons at its largest. There is even some bite marks on some fossil remains of the duck, that fits that of the Tarbosaurus and some did show signs of healing so I guess it won most of the time. Dinocarus was a very chunky animal but it had one slender area that would have been a disadvantage if grabbed, its neck. Its neck was not weak by any means but if a T-Rex managed to grab it even if it wasn't a perfect hold, the vertebrae are getting shattered. This scene in Amazing Dino World is also not that true. I doubt a female Dinocarus could shake off being bitten on the neck so long from a Tarbosaurus. While the Tarbosaurus itself likely wouldn't target a healthy bull Dinocarus, 
it would go after the young and the old like other theropods. And if T-Rex's little cousin could have had some amount of success when hunting it, then the T-Rex's success rate would have been even higher. If it was a real life setting, a Dinocarus could manage to intimidate a T-Rex and even hurt it enough to the point where it may consider retreat. But if it's a dead match, the Rex wins most of the time, even if we use the average 8 ton weight. Once the T-Rex gets a firm hold on basically any part of the body, it's pretty much game over. It could immediately cripple the duck if it caught it on its back, and straight up murk it if caught on the neck. So sadly, the T-Rex clear is my favorite duck with a 70% success rate. One more thing I forgot to mention about the T-Rex, it was the most intelligent Megaceropod out there, even outclassing a lot of the Dromaeosaurs. And its agility is matched by few in its weight class, so those are just some more points to the two-fingered fat boy. Next up we have... <sighs> I wasn't even going to put it on the list because of just how much paleontologists have screwed it over. I know it's not their fault, but come on, find something that gives it the edge. Why every year does the T-Rex get a size buff and a new power-up? While the Spinosaurus had testicular cancer and was susceptible to Alzheimer's. Was susceptible to Alzheimer's and could it move in knee-deep water. In all seriousness, the Spinosaurus is still a pretty cool dinosaur despite not having the fighting prowess as previously thought. In the early days, the Spinosaurus was the largest theropod, with a weight of 21 tons and 60 feet and some films took the scale to heart. In reality, the largest current estimate for a Spinosaurus is 8.3 tons. As a matter of fact, the material is so fragmentary that it's not even 100% confirmed to be a Spinosaurus itself, since it could have been another Spinosaurus. Anyway, most say it's Spinosaurus aegypticus, so that's what I'm going with. A little over 8 tons and 47 feet in length, it was in the top 3 largest land carnivores ever. Yet despite what films like Planet Dinosaur would have you believe, it couldn't exactly brawl with theropods of a similar size, especially the ones in its ecosystem like the Carcardaltosaurus. It actually lived in a pretty competitive neighborhood, with it sharing its home with other theropods of similar sizes and crocodilomorphs that lived in the waterways, so it would know how to defend itself without question. And with those massive arms, the force generated could break something if hit in the right place. But that's just about the only thing I could give it. Like the Dinocyrus, it had a thin neck compared to the other megatheropods, and a massive debuff when in a situation where it would need to fight, being its sail. Even if we use the average Rex size, which would even the playing fields in terms of weight, the Rex would still win. Granted, it would get some heavy slashes that could leave deep wounds. All that's needed is for the Rex to get to the seal and it's over. Even the neck. There's one thing in dinosaur pop culture that's not really true. Those scenes where you see theropods walking off being bitten by another on the neck for minutes on end won't be possible. At the very best, those things should be limping away after that much damage. As for the Spinosaurus, it wouldn't be going anywhere. The win rate increases again when larger specimens like Scotty and Sue are brought in, and I won't disrespect the Spinosaurus by bringing in Edie Cope or Goliath. The Spinosaurus did have a strong bite, but it wouldn't be enough to significantly damage a T-Rex, which is much more robust. And the teeth themselves weren't built for taking down large prey like the other theropods in this weight class, so it's fair to say not much is gonna happen. This time the success rate for the T-Rex actually goes up a bit between 70 and 75%. There was another theropod that lived with the Spinosaurus that could have finally put up somewhat of a fight though, and that was Carcardontosaurus Harcus. Despite it being one of the oldest mega theropods ever found, not a great deal is known about it, but I will say that like the T-Rex it also got a size buff. Not too long ago it had a size cap of around 7.4 tons. This specimen is estimated to weigh over 8 tons. To save time, I'm going to lump another member in, the Tarana Titan. This Argentinian Carcardontosaurus was almost 40 feet long and 7.5 tons. It may have been lighter than the Carcardontosaurus itself, but was built a little different. As a matter of fact, its overall build aligned more with that of a Tyrannosaur. It was very dense and robust for its length, and not as slender as the Carcardontosaurus itself. Both of these titans have the weaponry to now pose a threat to an adult T-Rex. Their teeth and claws meant for killing large prey which include the young sauropods in some cases would do the same to a T-Rex if not careful. While they may have the weaponry and somewhat power to do the job, the odds are still in the Tyrannosaurus favor. Even if we use a T-Rex of a similar size, it would still be stronger and has a more devastating bite. Not to mention that it could turn on a dime, even if something of Scotty's size was used. If the Carcardontosaurus manages to land a clean neck bite and shake around enough, it could let go and let the disoriented Rex bleed out. But with that said, the Rex wouldn't just stand still and let that happen, and a bite to the shark tooth carnivore's neck would be more severe. As for the Tyranna Titan, if it was a party, it would probably have the most luck out of any on the list. As I said, it's a very dense member of its family, and could have matched the T-Rex in strength. However, in reality, the average Rex still outweighs it by a ton, and would be able to overpower it in the end. Overall, in this section, I give the T-Rex a success rate of 65%, if we use average sizes, while larger specimens like AD Cope would win 72% of the time or even higher. However, there was another Tyrannosaur that was pretty close to the T-Rex in size, or probably was to be exact. Tyrannosaurus macroniensis, I probably butchered that, is a relative of the T-Rex that was recently found. 
Well, there's a lot of debate as to whether or not this animal is what they think it is, and the size estimates are very variable and could have been smaller than this, but for the most part, its agreed upon weight right now is around 8 tons. It may have matched the T-Rex in size, but it didn't have much advantages over it. Sure, it was comparable in size to the average Rex, but even then it was not as strong and was more slender, and its bite despite being that of a Tyrannosaur was still weaker than that of the T-Rex. Even at parity, it may have been slightly faster, but that's about it. In actuality, it would probably be a T-Rex fighting a more nimble and slightly less powerful version of itself, so to be honest, the Rex wins the same amount of times as the previous contenders. Finally, we have the Big Daddy himself making an appearance, the biggest land carnivore the world has ever seen. Well, at least in Jurassic World. In real life, it was the second largest, but not by much. Giganotosaurus carolinii, carolini, oh, I did it again, is my favorite dinosaur along with the Utahraptor. It was one of the earliest theropods thought to have been a T-Rex killer in the early 2000s, with it dwarfing the T-Rex. But like the Spinosaurus, this animal has since been dethroned. At least it's now bigger than the Spinosaurus though. Its average was very similar to that of the average T-Rexes, at around 8 tons and 43 feet with some specimens like the hollow type weighing 9.2 tons. At this size, it's in Sue's bracket and has the equipment to pose a significant threat to the Rex's life. If we were to use a hollow type, its bite force would be enough to cause significant damage to the Rex, no matter where it bit. After all, it took down sauropods. Not fully grown ones, but sauropods nonetheless. Its arms could have also been of use in the fight, using them to scratch the Rex's main body as it's struggling. Those serrated thin teeth would now do their job as the Tyrannosaurus struggles, causing even more damage to itself. A combination of blood loss and shock would easily lead to the victory of the Giganotosaurus. However, that's just a fantasy us Giga fans have. Despite it being slimmer on average, it still would be outmaneuvered by a T-Rex which had a better center of gravity and could tip the Giganotosaurus over more easily. And the Rex's bite was deadlier when it came to crushing. Almost like a hydraulic press, the T-Rex would more than likely kill the other theropod while hanging on. There is a jaw segment of another Giganotosaurus specimen called MUCPV-95 that's bigger than the holotype by 6% and has an estimated weight of 10 tons. But that's highly debatable, so I won't use that for this segment. To be very honest, a fight between the two could have gone either way, with it leaning more and more in the Tyrannosaurus' favor as large specimens are used, such as Goliath. So in this final fight, the Rex comes out the victor with a 62% success rate. So that basically does it. There is no Mega Seropod that we currently know of today that would beat the fully grown Rex in most scenarios. Despite the T-Rex not even being in my top 30 favorite dinosaurs, I have to admit that its overall build, raw power and intelligence simply outshines that of the other theropods. With that said, the others still have strengths of their own that in some cases could allow them to turn the tables every now and then. But overall, the T-Rex still remains the king of theropods. For those asking about the Mopasaurus and Meraxis Gigas, the weight for them currently, well, from at least what I could find, places both just below 7 tons. There are some sources claiming both could push past 8 tons, but that data is kind of sketchy. But hey, if it makes you feel any better, they still would lose to the T-Rex regardless. That's gonna be all folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to finally get some sleep and deal with a possible ear infection. Ciao.